All right, praise the Lord. As we've said before, we want to welcome everyone to the Church of God in Jesus' name, Tabernacle Ministerial Association. And we just want to remind everyone that the Church of God is a non-denominational church. Amen. We're made up of apostolics and made up of Church of God and all different kind of denominations. Amen. Coming together to glorify Jesus. And um, real quick, just a real quick testimony. The Lord brought this about because we have seen so many churches just wanting a certain minority. Uh, some of them wants the old people. Some of them wants the young people. Some of them wants just those that has money. But in the Word of God, we are given a charge to go out to the highways and the byways and compel them that they would come in, that His house would be made uh, complete and full and whole. And We never want to be a place where uh, we just focus on one certain minority of folks. And uh, the Lord just kindly impressed upon our hearts to get out and start this. I was overseer of 807 churches. And the Lord began to lead me to drop every bit of that to start this new fresh work. And uh, I was ministering in a church and jealousy arose. And the pastor did not even come to me. He sent me a letter and put it on my door and it said simply, do not come back. We're afraid that it's going to be a, 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 a overthrow of the church government. Uh, you're too anointed and uh, folks today, they don't want nothing to do with the anointing. And he was afraid that they were going to be attracted to me. So with that, I fell out of place and have fell out of place. Uh, me and Andy has traveled all across West Virginia and Ohio and Kentucky going to different churches and preaching different places and nothing fell at home. And one day the Lord just dropped it into our spirit and we started working on this and it's been in the making for over a year. We got all of our paperwork in place. We got everything situated, wrote all of our bylaws, constitutions, all of that stuff that we have to have and then we began to seek out a building. It seemed like one step right after another, something began to uh, fight us. And we know what that is. And it just seemed like around every corner. And then all of a sudden, this building became uh, available. And we grabbed it as soon as we could. And we're here now to have church. We're here to have a Holy Ghost revolution. And to see the power of God released upon the city of Fremont, Ohio. And we're looking forward to see in what God's got. Amen. At this time, we just want to start our broadcast. And uh, we're going to start our broadcast here and go from here on with our broadcast. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Gospel Deliverance Program recorded at the Church of God in Jesus' Name Tabernacle. We want to invite you out to be with us. We are located at 401 Ohio Avenue, Suit B, in Fremont, Ohio, 43420. Senior Bishop Lee Bowley and Senior Pastor Andy Roberts. At this time, we want Brother Andy to come and minister to us the Word of God that God has for us today. We amen. give him a round of applause as he comes. Amen. 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 How about you give God some praise? Amen. Amen. He is more worthy. He, yes. is, he is everything. And, um, I am nothing. So I give all honor and all glory and all praise to my Father who art in heaven. Amen. And, um, he is worthy to be praised. Yes, um, if you're staying with me, I want to read you a scripture. I started this uh, message uh, a few weeks ago, and if you would like to listen to this, we have CDs available of every message that we preach. They are available for those who would like to hear it. But I want to continue this. I felt in my spirit I should go into a deeper uh, part on this. Um, full speed ahead. I believe there's nothing more than what God wants us to do than go full speed ahead. And I'll go more into this in details here. But Acts chapter 17, I read this a few weeks ago. Acts 17, verse 28. Then I'm going to go to Acts 27. But Acts 17, verse 28 says, For in Him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. But Acts 27, 
verse 9 through 11 says, And when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be hurt and much damage, not only of the landing and the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Verse 20 through 25 says, and when neither sun nor stars in the many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And I exhort you to be of good courage, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given these all these all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it, it was told me. So, Lord, today I pray that the weight of heaven would back my words. I pray, Lord, that somebody would be encouraged, uplifted, and set free. Lord, that your will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done today in this place. And, Lord, all of those that are listening on the broadcast, Lord, we pray that you would touch their hearts. Set them free this day yeah. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. We read that in Him we live and move and have our being. There is no living. There is no living, no moving, nothing without Him. You cannot do nothing without Him. You can try, but those that, have, that do not have Him are not really living. We have a necessary, it is a, it is a con we have a constant dependence dependence upon Him. In Him we live. That is, we owe Him our lives. He is forming us. He is molding us. He is yeah. shaping us. Yeah. He is continually sustaining us. Yeah. He is our life and the length of our days. Yeah. In Him we move. You can't go forward without Him. Yeah. In Him we move. In Him all motion comes from Him. Yeah. He, the head of the church, He, the head of our life, gives us the orders and we follow and we obey. We follow and we obey. This is not Burger King that we do what we want. We follow and we obey. He tells us to go left. We go left. He tells us to go right. We go right. We do what He says because He is our being. He is our life. He is our motion. He is a, he is a God of movement and desires that His people be the same. A people of action. Amen. A people of action. We are not called just to simply hold the fort. I used to do that song. We used to do that song growing up. Hold the fort. Hold the fort. But we're not just called to simply hold the fort. But we are called to invade enemy territory. And not just invade enemy territory, but to win. To win. And we are going to win. We are not just called to hold the fort, but we are called to invade enemy territory. We live in Him. Move in Him. And are in Him. Without Him, we are nothing. We not only can do nothing, but we are nothing. We are. We continue to be because of His continued, present, and supporting love, grace, yes, and mercy. Yes. The moment, the moment the church takes her focus off of Him, He is central. He is pre He has preeminence. The moment we take our focus off of Him, we become dependent upon ourselves, setting ourselves up for failure. And I tell you what, I've come this far not to fail. I'm not, I don't have no fair failure in my sight. Well, on part one of this message, I told you the story of Captain Farragut. In the midst of opposition, in the midst of certain doom and destruction, he was, he was told to not go ahead. But he had courage to declare and go full speed ahead. He was told to allow the bigger ships to lead the charge. He was told that they were not qualified, they were, that their end result would be an end disaster. Would end in disaster. We here in Fremont were told that we would never get started, that we would never begin. Now that we have started, we have been told that we will never succeed. We have received emails and phone calls 
Just even this week, stating, you'll never make it. Saying, give it up. You can't do it. <laughs> but they were wrong the first time, and they are wrong again. Some may think that we are being set up for disaster, but I say, full speed ahead. I say, full speed ahead. Some may want to let the other ship with more powerful guns, yeah. with more money, lead the attack. But I say, we will lead the attack. I say, full speed ahead. Some may have looked down on you your whole life. Some may have looked down on you your whole life. Some may have counted you off as nothing or nobody. Some may have rejected or abandoned you just because of who you are or because of your worship towards God. Or you may feel unworthy or too young or too old. You may feel unqualified. You may, may, you may have unrepentant sins in your life or baggage that is holding you back. But the order is still the same. It is time to go full speed ahead. There is no time, no time to stay where we are. But we have a place that we are going. So let me ask you today, where are you going? Where are you going as an individual and as a church? If we are going to go full speed ahead, there must be somewhere that we are going. Number one, this world is not our home. This world is not home. We are only passing by. Heaven, heaven is our destination. I am not just living this life just to, you know, one day fall asleep and never live again. I have heaven on my mind, and I want to make heaven my home. I live this life to please the Lord, because He has suffered and death and your blood and died for me. This world is not our home. Our destination is heaven. I would not be satisfied. Number two, I would not be satisfied until all my household is saved. Not only my son and my family, but I want all my household, all my brothers, all my sisters, my mother, I want everyone to be on this ship. I am not satisfied until my household is saved. I will not be satisfied. I will not be satisfied until there is a city-wide revival, a city-wide transformation. I'm not interested in just being another house, interested in being another church. I want to see a city-wide revival. I have heard it prophesied in times past, in years past, that there would be a great outpouring in this city, and I have not seen it yet. I'm not interested in having a little down, just a little sprinkle here and there. I want a downpour of the Holy Ghost in this place and in this city. I am not satisfied until I see it. Come on. I will not be satisfied. I'm going full speed ahead because I want to go there. I will not be satisfied until the homeless and the adulterer and the drug addict and the gambler and the liar and the cheater, the one who committed abortion, the homosexual, the sick and the dying and the broken and the rejected are healed and set free by the blood of the Lamb. I will not be satisfied until I see it happen. I will not be satisfied. This is the course that we are on. This is the course we are on. This is what we were born for. Come on. I was born for this. Come on. I have a mandate to see this happen. Yes, sir. Come on. A mandate from God. We will not settle. We have a so if you want to be part of this ship, this is our destination. And we're looking for people that will join us in this journey. This is our destination. This is our mission. You see, our vision is clear. Oh yes. We will not settle for mediocrity. Come on now. We're not going to be mediocre here. We're going to be excellent. We're going to be above Amen. and not beneath. Amen. We will not settle for the status quo. We will not be marked by our past and we will be and we will be who God has called us to be. Amen. We will have what he says is ours. Oh yes. Come on. And we will see that which I have not seen, yes. nor that which ear hath heard. If it has been promised to us in His Word, we want it. Yes, we want it. So now that we have been given the order to go full speed ahead, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The price has been paid for us to do this. I talked about this last week. 2,000 years ago, a man rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. This is Palm Sunday. <laughs> Palm Sunday. This is not your normal Palm Sunday message. But he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. They cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They who worshipped him on that day would soon cry, 
Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. This man declared that if he be lifted up, he would draw all men unto him. Yes. This man was hung on a cross, and he declared, it is finished. He suffered, he bled, and he died for us. It is because of him we are free. Yes. It is because of him we have our life, yes. and we have our being. Yes. It is because of him that we move forward today. Yes. What do you do when you're trying to go full speed ahead? but you encounter a storm or something happens to your ship. We read the story of Paul. They set sail. Paul warned them. He prophesied unto them. In verse 10, he said, he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. The man of God gave them some instruction, a prophecy, they chose to believe the, the captain over the man of God. We need to take heed to our anointed men of God. If they give us a warning or if they give us a word, we better take heed to it. But Paul was heading to Rome. He had a destination. God wanted him there. Paul was heading to Rome, but the ship was moving very slowly. The Bible says that it barely moved. They became kind of stuck. And I know people that are stuck today. I know churches that are stuck, but you don't have to be stuck. God has called us to get you unstuck. Amen. Some feel that they are stuck, but I tell you today that it's time to raise the anchor. Take up your anchor and set your sails. It's time to go forward. Amen. Your season of being stuck is over. Amen. I tell you that are listening today, your season of being stuck is over. Amen. Your season of stagnation is over. <laughs> your season of stagnation is over. We all have storms that we face and are facing. You are, in, are you in a storm today? Are you in a storm that you feel like that will never, that is never going to end or that will be your demise? Some storms that we face come because of our disobedience and some storms come to test us. Some storms come so God can allow some things to be broken from our lives so we can, we'll be able to focus on Him. Some storms come so that can show God's glory in our lives and in our circumstances. Amen. You should never be driven by the storm, but by the word of the Lord. Paul had a word. What was that word? He said that an angel came and stood by the angel of the Lord and says, Who I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all of them that sail with thee. All those that sail with you, they aren't going to be touched, Paul. Therefore, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it should be as it was even told me. You should never be driven by the storm, but by driven by the word. He had a word. When you receive a word from the Lord, hold on to that word. Amen. Too many are driven by the storm or driven by drama. Too many racked by what hell has done to them. But don't let drama dictate your course. Don't let your past dictate where you are going. You can be set free. You can be healed. Yeah. You can be delivered. And God can put you on the right Come path. On. You are no longer stuck. Come on. I decree and declare unto you today that you are no longer stuck. Hallelujah. Keep on moving. Keep yes. on moving. Keep your praise moving. Lord. Keep your praise moving. Yes. Keep your faith moving. Yes. Keep everything moving as God wants it to move. Paul told them to keep courage. Keep courage, he said. In the midst of the storm, he said, none of you will perish. None of you will perish. But we are going to lose the ship. What has been your ship? Has it been a church that you belong to? A church that you gave your life for? A ministry that you were in? A position that you held? What is your ship? Is your ship a relationship? Is your ship a friendship that turns sour? Is your ship your money? Is your ship your job? What ship have you put your confidence in that you never thought would sink or have troubles or would go into shipwreck? Some were sold out to what they believed. They were sold out to what they, that and what they stood for, what they worked so hard for, that they never thought that the ship would ever sink. We thought of the ship would be that which would take them to the rapture. 
But somewhere along the way, they lost the ship. Have you ever been there? I've been there. The ship becomes shipwrecked. None of you will perish. You will not die until you see God's promise fulfilled in your life. And I tell that and I tell that to you today. You will not die. You will not perish until every promise God has given to you is fulfilled. Everyone in your ship will make it. It doesn't matter what hell says. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what your critics say. Everyone will make it. Everyone that is associated with you will make it. And I say, Lord, bring us people. Yes. You need to be careful who you covenant with because yes. the Bible says that everybody that goes with you is going to make it. So be careful who you, who you covenant with. Amen. So I give the charge today. All aboard. Lincoln, all aboard. All aboard this ship because we're going somewhere. We have a date with destiny. Sometimes you don't have money, or you don't have people, or you don't have resources to make it. But the, and all you have is a word. Amen. You have to stand on that word. Amen. Your waiting is over. Yes, you are healed. Yes, yes. you are delivered. And yes, yes you are free. When yes. things start getting bad, what do people usually do? They usually look for a way out. I can just imagine them on the ship. They said, Paul, we need our lifeboat. We're not going to make it. Bring out the lifeboats. The church can't have a plan B. <laughs> you can't have a plan B for your life. God must be plan A, B, C, D. Right. God must be everything. 100% God or nothing. Let the lifeboat go. Let the lifeboat go. He wants you to be passionate about Him. Amen. Acts chapter 28. Let me close with this. Acts 28, verse 1 through 6 says, And when they were escaped, He made it. He made it. It wasn't easy. He got through the storm. Just as we're getting through the storm. Amen. So now he's landed. And when they were escaped, they made it. When they knew that the island was called Militia, Militia and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered the bundle of sticks, and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat, and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer whom thou hast who, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit he looked, he looked when he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. The storm didn't take him out. So, God, so the devil brings something else to take him out. If the storm can't take him out, the snake will. Come on. <laughs> you know who you're dealing with. Paul was, I'm sure Paul's response was, you know who you're dealing with here? You're not dealing with some rookie. <laughs> and I told to the devil today, you know who you're dealing with? We are no rookies. He Come said, on. you know who you need to shake it off. Whatever is intimidating you, and I tell you today, whatever is intimidating you, whatever is attacking you, shake it off. Whatever is holding you back, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. The doubters and the haters expected him to fall over dead. And we're going to have doubters and haters. People are not going to agree with you. And they expected him to fall over dead. But verse 8 says, And when it came to pass that the father, that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of the bloody flukes, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hand on him and healed him. And when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the islands, came and were healed. Paul laid his hands upon the saints. The same thing, the same area that the enemy had been attacking, he attacked his hand and he shook it off. The same area, the same thing that the enemy is attacking, God will use to bless, promote, and to release. Amen. What God will use for His glory. So if He has been attacking your money... Guess what he's going to do? He's going to bring you in some money because that's what the devil is attacking. So he's going to bring you in to some money that will allow you to be 
which will allow you to do God's will. If he has an attack in your health, guess what? He's going to use your health to give him the glory. Amen. When others saw the miracles, then they believed. This boat has been through a lot, been battered and scarred. We must bless this generation behind us. And I want to end today with a special blessing for you. Today he is renewing the hopes of the prisoners and lifting up the heads of those who have been cast down Amen. and disappointed. Amen. He has not rejected their prayers. He has not rejected your prayers. Your prayers are heard, but the shaking, the storm is necessary. It has been necessary. When the enemy taunts you and bids you surrender, when he bids you to retreat, just wrap yourself in God's presence and guard the entrances of your heart. Yeah. Refuse to be in fear. Yeah. Refuse to fear rejected. Yeah. You are not the rejected. You are the accepted. Yeah. And yeah. you can make it. And you will make it. Yeah. You will make it yeah. to your destination. Yeah. Any other counsel is a lie of the adversary. So be at peace. Yeah. Church, be at peace. And know that every scourge will pass over and will be and he will establish you in your own place and with your own eyes you will see all of his goodness. Amen. I decree and declare that unto yes. you today. You shall overcome. Yes. You will make it. Yes. Not only you but all those that are associated with you. Amen. Do not retreat. Do not retreat, but let's go full speed ahead. Yes. You will make it through the storm. Amen. You will make it through the storm. No matter what happens no matter what the ship looks like now, you will make it. And God's going to bring you out even more anointed, more blessed than ever before. I believe that. So, Lord, today I pray over those that have heard this, these words. I pray that you would touch them and bless them and anoint them. Lord, I pray that you would help them to push forward, to not... Lord, have any other plans, but you are our plan. Yes. We are not looking for any lifeboats, but you are our lifeline. You are everything we need. I yes. pray today, I speak over them peace yes. and courage yes. and strength today. Yes. Touch their bodies, touch their minds, yes. touch their hearts. Yes. Set them free today, oh God. Lord, we look to you yes. through the storm. Lord, some have wanted us to retreat. But we say we go forward. Yes. We go full speed ahead. We will lead this charge in our city. Yes. We will take this city by storm. Yes. We will lead the charge. Lord, help us to turn our city upside down. Yes. Go with us. Work with us. Yes. Do these things through us. Lord, and help us to be the mouthpiece that you want us to be. Yes. Lord, touch those that are here today. Bless them. Yes. Touch them today. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We encourage you. This has been a recording of the Church of God in Jesus' name, Gospel Deliverance Program. Um, God bless you. It's our prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you today.